Hey guys, what's up? I just picked up my Azure Standard Order and I'm about to unload it. I figured I'd tell you guys a little bit about it. Oh, this just fell out of the back of the car. Not my best work. <laughs> Y'all are gonna hear some loud, opinionated cattle in the background. That's because we pulled a few of the heifers today. Uh, they were old enough that they need to be weaned and pulled out of the general population so that they don't inadvertently get line bred by their dad. Uh, one, we don't want to do line breeding. You can, but in this case, we're not we're not trying to do that. But two, they're too young, so we want to take them out and uh, they're telling us about how they feel on it. Anyway, I took my camera to the Azure pickup today with intentions of videoing and then didn't do it because I had to park far away and carry all this stuff. Azure Standard, if you are unfamiliar with it, is a, uh, a company where you can order food directly. Typically, uh, it's organic kind of more health food products. A lot of times it's it's more kind of farm direct, I guess. Uh, they have a lot of farms that work for them. Something that I've used for several years now. Now, back whenever I was in Arkansas, whenever I was first really getting into like more healthful foods, there really weren't nearly as many options in stores then. Now, kind of in Arkansas there was a period that I didn't really order from Azure very much because the stores had become so well stocked but then I moved out here to South Carolina and we live in a very we don't actually live in any town we live outside of the town limits but the closest town is a very small town and we have a Walmart there but there's not a lot of options as far as the kind of food I like to buy. I then looked up Azure Standard again and started ordering from them. So I shop bulk um, it does take some working up to shopping this way, um, unless you just have a lot of money and want to jump into it, but that to me would probably be out of reach for most people. So it took us a while to get to where we could shop this way with a grocery budget. Um, so like my order today, I'll show you what I got because I buy bulk. I don't have to buy the same things every month. And the idea in buying bulk is that like this order, I did get one big bag of sugar, but um, most of this order is actually gluten-free pasta. So I like this Jovial brand of pasta. It's brown rice. And um, we, for the most part, use gluten-free pasta for our whole family. Although Jeremiah and I are the only ones who eat entirely gl gluten-free. I have other pasta kind of like as a backup if I ever need it, but this is our go-to. And I just got like manicotti and penne, um, fettuccine, lasagna. I got this capellini. This is several months worth of pasta. We don't eat pasta like every night. We don't even eat it every week. But uh, I just buy all of this at once. And I will not buy pasta noodles again until these start to run out. And the other thing that I ordered on this pickup was um, a case of chocolate chips. So I like to buy fair trade chocolate. And if you go to like a grocery store, if they actually carry fair trade chocolate, which in my small town, our grocery store does not, I would have to go into the city and drive over an hour to buy fair trade chocolate. And it would be at a store like Whole Foods. And one bag of chocolate chips would be, I don't know, probably like $7. Whereas if I buy them by the case from Azure, I get, I save a couple dollars per bag. And I, I buy this, I mean, I don't buy it just that frequently. Obviously we're not using just a ton of this stuff, but I will buy one this month and I'll probably buy one next month as well because we're coming into holiday baking. Um, and then I'll just put them in my pantry and get them out of there as I need them. My Azure order next month will be more varied. Um, this month, I didn't, I didn't have a lot of stuff that I needed, but I ran out of pasta. So I used most of the budget that I have. Um, I will spend at least a few hundred dollars for Azure every month. Um, and like this month, it was almost entirely pasta. Next month, it'll be more varied. And that's kind of the nature of bulk buying is that you buy a whole lot of something or you know you double up so that the next time you shop 
you don't have to buy that thing, which opens up the grocery budget to buy something else. And now for us, we're growing a hundred chickens at a time, you know, we're butchering whole hogs at a time. Uh, so I don't have to buy meat every month, mostly. Um, and that leaves that all of that space open in the grocery budget to then bulk buy pasta. So now I don't have to buy pasta. And then next time I'll, you know, maybe bulk buy flour or whatever the ingredients I would use. I would buy cases of canned and things whatever that might be um, and then I'm shopping my pantry for meal planning rather than going to the grocery store so I shared in my last vlog that I wasn't feeling well uh, yesterday I'm still not quite a hundred percent taking it easy as one can when they're a mother to a lot of children and um, I still have to cook dinner I since I got all of that pasta today I picked it up from the Azure pickup I am definitely going to be taking advantage of that. Pasta is our like fast food convenience food. Oh snap, look at this. Look at that guy. I don't know that I've ever seen a hornworm so striped. Does anybody know what's up with that? So I'm about to do something that some of you will be like, I cannot believe you're doing that. I am going to leave him there because I am pretty well done with these tomatoes. I'm still harvesting a little bit here and there, but I have no reason to kill that hornworm. Um, he's not costing me my harvest. I've gotten my harvest for this year, so he can stay. I do want these eggplants though. For me with my health, um, one of the things I've had to learn is that I don't always have to be the most productive and that sometimes I'm just not gonna operate at a 10. Um, and I actually do better to make my peace with that. Do what I can within reason and then also take it easy. Like, that's okay. Sometimes it just is that way. So today I'm gonna to be cooking dinner sitting on a stool uh, because I'm having a lot of pain. And um, you know, my family will help me. They always do. They actually saw me starting to unload and they said they would take it now. Normally when an Azure order came in, I would definitely like closely oversee the unloading because I don't want my pantry to get disorganized and discombobulated, but my pantry is already discombobulated uh, just from all the pumpkins coming in and all this stuff. So Maya actually came over and said, hey, I'll help you organize the pantry later this week. Let's just let the boys get this stuff in. So I said, I'm okay with that. And I came out to the garden to get eggplants and basil and I'm gonna grab a few tomatoes, though I'm not sure what kind of shape they're gonna be in. Also, I just grabbed some oregano. I should have brought something to harvest stuff in, but here we are, throwing, clothes, throwing stuff in the shirt. Somehow it always ends up coming to this. So there's this guy, oh, look at these tomatoes. Um, I'm still tickled to be harvesting tomatoes in October. They're not pretty, they've got some weird spots in it, but I bet I can get enough out of these to do the recipe I'm trying to do. Um, so there's this guy I follow on Instagram. His name is Julius Roberts. I'll put a link to his Instagram. He is delightful. Um, he lives in the UK. He has a small holding. That's what they call like a small homestead there. And he shares recipes and just beautiful snapshots of life. I'm so excited for his new cookbook that's coming out. I don't know him. I've never actually interacted with him, but I've thoroughly enjoyed following him and, and his posts and the inspiration I feel in the kitchen. And he posted a recipe yesterday of just like a pasta that he was putting together with roasted eggplants. And I thought today that, that would be a really great, relatively quick and easy recipe to use what I actively have growing in my garden. And since I got my bulk pasta order in, um, what a better day to do it, right? I've got a pretty little harvest right here. I'm gonna come over here and grab some basil. A little brown in spots, but this will still taste lovely. Oh, I'm trying to be fully appreciative of this and not sad, but I'm going to miss being able to run out and grab this here in the next couple of months. I guess then we'll just come out and grab cabbages and rutabagas instead. I'll still miss this. <laughs> it sounds like they're cheering you guys on in your baseball game. Is that what it sounds like? Or they're jeering. Ah! 
<laughs> this this box was in the back of the side by side. I'm gonna use it to carry in my little grocery run to the garden. When I do any sort of cooking on a video, I always get asked about using cast iron on a flat top stove. The real risk and why they tell you not to do that is because obviously if I were to drop this pan on this glass top stove, it would break. And moving them around, sliding them around can definitely scratch it. Mine does have some scratches on it. When we moved in here, we bought this mobile home and put on our land. It just, we didn't get to pick. We just got whichever one we could get with the time crunch and the post COVID ordering backups and all of that stuff. And it had this glass top stove on it. We were kind of in this place of like, okay, we could take it out and sell it secondhand, like on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace, and get part of what it's worth. Um, and then we would have to buy a new one for sure. Or we could risk it. And the, the worst that could happen is, is we break it and then we have to buy a new one. And two and a half years later, we're still here putting cast iron on it and it's been fine. I do can on top of it. There is a risk if you put like a really heavy canner on a glass top that it can break it, but that has not been my experience. I've canned full loads uh, multiple times. I probably wouldn't put two canners on it at the same time because I feel like that would just be like really pushing the limit, but so far it's been fine. You know, I'm kind of of the mind that you can do anything risky as long as you understand the risk that you're taking and like knowledgeably take it. Like if I broke my stove, I would be I would be the only one that I could blame in that situation, but it was a risk I was willing to take. So this recipe that Julius Roberts posted roasts eggplant and then you make like a kind of rustic tomato sauce and then toss pasta in it, toss the eggplant back in. I am also going to uh, cut some Italian sausages and roast those as well, just to add some protein to this. I'll, like I said, I'll link his Instagram Whenever he said, whenever he was given his instructions, he said, take your aubergines and cut them into just some jaunty pieces. And I was like, I'll definitely cut them into jaunty pieces. <laughs> I appreciate that language. Uh, that's what I'm doing. Here's my jaunty pieces. <laughs> So I'm just gonna toss these in olive oil on the pan and stir them around in it. Um, he did it in a bowl, but this is just one less thing to wash. And then put salt on them. And then I'm gonna put them in a hot oven to roast. I'm also going to just cut these sausages into slices, put them on a pan and roast them as well. So this last weekend, we went up uh, to a homesteading event in Clemson Farm where you live. And typically, when we travel, we like to take our own food where we can and be able to cook. And in this case, we took our RV to be able to do that. And when we got there, we had a little bit of a fiasco. We had brought these big trash cans of coffee, bags of coffee, because we had a little bit extra from our Patreon launch that we wanted to be able to sell them there. And we'd stuck them in the back of the truck in between the gooseneck hitch of the fifth wheel and the back window of the truck, which we will never do again, because my and Mr. Turn had to turn around and the angle of the fifth wheel hit the trash cans, pushed it against the back of the truck and exploded the back glass of the truck. Um, no one was hurt, thankfully, and we've since gotten it fixed. It was, you know, we were able to make an insurance claim. And so it wasn't, nothing got ruined or anything like that other than what was easily fixable. But it was the middle of the night because we hadn't left for the event until after Jackson's football game was over. And so we were driving up there late. And that's just the nature of things, you know. You come in the middle of the night, you have a busted back glass. So we get in, we get everybody unloaded, everybody settled. We get, you know, where it's all settled. It's like one in the morning at this point. And I brought my bread machine and I... Put the, was putting the ingredients in the bread machine at one in the morning so that it could bake bread 
and we would wake up to bread and then we would have that the next day for the kids to have sandwiches while we were here at this event. And uh, my friend Daniel went up with us and he was staying there. He stayed in the living room of our camper because we didn't have the teenagers with us. He said something about me, you know, like loading up the bread machine at one in the morning. And I said, the secret to eating real food meals is that you're always thinking about what you're eating tomorrow. You're always thinking about what you're eating in the next season, in the next month. And I would say that goes across the board. You know, it goes across the board in like the tasks you have to do the day before. And if you're gardening, it goes into how you're, what you're gonna plant. You're just always thinking about what you're eating later on down the road. And the beauty of that is, is that very rarely do you necessarily have to think of that day what you're eating in any sort of panic sense because when you get to have a bulk pantry and you get to where you have a big garden and you get to where you have all of this built up it takes some time years even um, you have to think about what you're eating later on for probably a handful of years before you really get it on autopilot but I mean for me in this instant you know I saw someone I admire post a great recipe and I was able to go hmm Tomorrow, I'll pick up my pasta order, and once I do that, I'll literally have everything I need at my fingertips to make this great food. And I think, oh, it's just telling me it's hot enough. I think the biggest lie that, well, one of the biggest lies we are falling for in our society is that we shouldn't have to think about our food ahead of time. Um, for so long, people have put great effort into eating and eating well. And only in the last hundred years has selling convenience to the level that it is now being sold regarding food become such a massive industry. I mean, it's crazy when you go in the grocery store and you see that what we are being told and what we have come to believe is that food should be fast, cheap, and easy. And whenever we go in the store, I mean, we're thinking, how do we feed our family when we're meal planning? How do we feed our family? But we're prioritizing, how can we feed our family conveniently? And listen, I'm a mom with a lot of kids um, with some struggles with my health. Like, we have had plenty of nights where we eat oatmeal for dinner. Like, it's... It's not like what I'm saying means that you're always going to be eating chef level food and it's gonna just be easy. It's not, I mean, it, it's definitely work. But I think that with anything, when we frame it in a certain way, it changes how we experience it. Even like right now, I don't feel great, but I love doing this. I felt excited when I saw that recipe. And so I'm not just doing this out of obligation, Though the obligation is there, my family is going to start asking me, it's like, it's five o'clock right now, they're going to start asking me here real soon, Mom, what's for dinner? What's for dinner? I'm hungry. But because I've been thinking about this ahead of time, because I knew I had the ingredients, because although right now I'm chopping an onion, this is actually a pretty easy dinner. Um, overall, I don't, I'm not feeling burdened right now. This is what I run into a lot with my like end of season tomatoes. It's like they look good on the inside but, or on the outside, but then the inside will be full of like dark spots and the seeds are weird. Oh, I'm just cutting what I can off of these. I'm gonna put some canned tomatoes in the sauce as well. How I make tomato sauces is very similar to what he showed. I mean, I just cut up some onions and garlic and saute those in olive oil and then throw in canned tomatoes um, and herbs and that's like pasta sauce. But I like the idea of putting a little bit of fresh tomatoes in just to give it kind of a fresh boost. I didn't, even with those four tomatoes I picked, about half of it was usable. For me, one of the big keys in like cooking largely from scratch is staying inspired. It's easy to get burnt out. I do get burnt out. I mean, I definitely. And you know, thankfully I've got Maya, I've got teenagers, so if I need like a night to say, I just can't tonight, I cannot cook, I can have, you know, I've got a team, which granted makes it a lot easier. Uh, so, you know, if you're, if you're out there doing it all by yourself, like have some grace on yourself that you may still need to lean into some convenient options on nights that you simply just can't. 
but you know personally and pushing myself to the most I can do it's very important to stay inspired and that's why I like to follow people who cook and who are doing exciting things with real food things that you know like little stuff like roasting eggplants and throwing it in a pasta it's not something I've tried before and whenever I see something and I see it I think that looks really good it keeps me excited to come home and and cook something for all of my oiling the eggplant on one pan to save washing a bowl I just had to move this into a larger pan it was just too full and I didn't want it splashing everywhere these are actually tomatoes I canned last year um, from the farmers market I went and got lots of tomatoes from the farmers market we have a the state farmers market where you can buy bulk stuff pretty affordably and when I had such a terrible tomato harvest last year I went and bought bushels of tomatoes and canned entirely too many because you know I didn't have a pesky garden to keep up with since mine failed so badly <laughs> all right guys I'm about to put all of this together I cooked my turkey and didn't show you all the finished product and everybody's like Jess you failed us so I'm gonna show you this roasted eggplant I'm gonna show you the sauce and then you're gonna have to imagine it all coming together because that still needs to simmer for a little while there it is doesn't look like much but I think I don't know I may cook this a little bit longer but I'm gonna toss it in that sauce and I think it's gonna taste really good I've got family coming in they're pulling in the driveway right now and I know that if I do not sign this video off now I'll forget so <laughs> thank you guys for hanging out with me today I'll link Julius Roberts I'd love to know who you turn to for food inspiration uh, because that is definitely something reliable sources for information and people who are consistently posting food inspiration especially if it's like farm to table therefore seasonal i need to know so comment down below thank you guys i bless you until next time